All right, so here we are with political parties today. All right, so on the next slide, the definition of a political party. Ms. Gina, will you read us the definition of a political party? So Jacob, the goal of a political party is what, according to that definition? What is their objective? To be like a president. Okay, so they want to get elected, but why do they want to get elected? What are they trying to do? Armani, do you see it? What is the goal of a political party? In the definition of political party, what is the goal of a political party? Uh, uh, no, you're close. They want to influence the vote so that they can do something else. Do you see it, Zoe? Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, we overcomplicate it sometimes. So the goal of a political party is to influence public policy. The goal of a political party is to have gun control laws be what they want them to be. The goal of a political party is to somehow affect education policy or all those policies that you guys are researching. Political parties care about that because remember, they're trying to shape that agenda and influence the policies that our institutions of government are going to create. The means by which they do that is to try to get people into office. And so they have really like, there are different things they do, but, but that's like kind of their ultimate tool because they think if I get my people elected, then once elected, they can work to implement those policies. Can you automatically see the disconnect and the problem with that? Donald Trump gets elected president. Is that going to further the Republican Party agenda? Why, Gina? Well, she's not really that great as a Republican. I just called her your mom's name. Why, Gracie? I'm sorry. I was like, why are you just looking at me like that? Okay, I'm so sorry. So, Gracie, like, because he's not wet, say it again. Because we in this country, and here's the thing, Donald Trump's not the only one. He's just obvious. So it's really easy to pick on him. But we don't have in this country what's called strict party discipline. We don't have a situation where somebody says, I'm a Republican, and you go, oh, they believe blah, 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 blah. Because our parties are huge, and they're all-encompassing, and our government touches so many aspects of policy that you don't have a situation where you know that somebody is Republican or is Democrat 100%. I would venture to say that like most no one is. It gets tricky as you become president or as you become like high ranking people like Speaker of the House or President Pro Tem in the Senate. That definitely can become more difficult. But so there is a bit of a disconnect and that's why maybe parties aren't as popular as they used to be. Okay? Look on your paper, please. <coughs> Question two reads What is the most powerful tool or aspect of the American party system? You already know this. Think about what you have learned that parties do. What do you think is the most powerful thing they do to bring unification and to say, this is how we want policies to look? Okay, you're, you're on the right track. So they're going to have a primary and a caucus. And what do the primary and caucuses lead up to? Okay, and at the national convention, we do two very important things. We nominate the presidential and vice presidential candidate, but what else do we do at the national convention? Close, pretty much, it's the same thing. We approve a party platform. So I was gonna show you what they look like. So this year, this summer, when the Republicans met in 2016, they approved a 66 page platform. That says for the next four years, until we have a new convention, this is what we stand for. And look, they have this cool dedication to all who stand strong in the face of danger so that the American people can be protected against it. So it's pretty cool. And then they go down, and you guys, they have policy suggestions. They have a preamble to their document. They have, this is their chairman, the co-chairs of the party. This is the national party, not the state. And then here's their table of contents. They have policies about all of these things. 
And they read like big lofty goals, but they will say in there what they want to happen with taxes, what they want to happen with gun control. And in my lifetime, I have seen these parties evolve and change. I promise you that these platforms are not stagnant. Some issues are pretty consistent, but you will see some kind of evolution. And the other thing is sometimes you'll actually see the candidates name in them. So here's the Democrats. They do the same thing. Theirs is only 55 pages. They've got a table of contents as well. They also have a preamble. And here in their preamble, they're going to attach themselves to President Obama because in their mind, he's still popular enough that they want to have that link. And they want to try to like continue on that legacy. If it was a president that was just ridiculously unpopular, they might not do that. Okay? And even some years at the National Convention, they'll actually put the candidate's name in there. Like I would suspect that you will find Hillary Clinton's name in here somewhere. Remember we talked about Citizens United? Over here it says, we'll fight to end the broken campaign finance system, overturn Citizens United, restore the Voting Rights Act. So it's really specific. Okay? So I'm telling you this is the most powerful tool. I want you guys at your table to talk about why. Why does this give parties to the power? And you all just go ahead and chat with it at your table.